Welcome to this video presentation on how to balance redox equations. Balancing equations for redox reactions is a difficult skill to master and takes practice to become competent. It is an elegant process that follows the same sequence of steps each time. Once you have learned these steps, even complicated equations will become easy to do. Here are the learning outcomes for this presentation. You will identify reactant product pairs for the oxidation and reduction reactions, balance half equations in acidic conditions, and combine half equations to give an overall balanced equation. Let's start by showing you all the steps required to balance an equation. If you don't have a written copy of this process in your notes, then you should pause the video at this point and write down these steps or take a screenshot. I will refer to these number steps in our worked examples so you can follow the process. Let's start with a simple common example by showing you the reaction between magnesium metal and hydrochloric acid. This is a standard reaction done with students at all levels to produce hydrogen gas. As you can see, the magnesium is reacting vigorously, forming a colourless solution and bubbles, which we've identified as hydrogen gas. The first thing we need to do is identify the two key reactants involved in the redox change and their products. For this, you will need to consult a redox resource sheet, which you have been given and looks like this. We need to find the two pairs that match our reaction. In this reaction, the silvery magnesium metal disappears, forming a colourless solution of magnesium ions. So the reaction pair for this change is this one. The colourless acidic solution reacts to form bubbles of hydrogen gas. So the pair for this change is this one here. So now we have our two reaction pairs, which are these two here. The chloride ions of the acidic solution are spectator ions, so we will ignore them. So now we have our simple unbalanced equation that looks like this. Step one is to divide the equation into two halves and balance them separately. Let's start with the magnesium half equation. 1A says to balance the atoms which are not oxygen or hydrogen. This is the magnesium. There is one magnesium on each side, so they are balanced. 1B says to balance oxygen atoms. There are none, so we can ignore this step. 1C says to balance hydrogen atoms. There are none, so we can ignore this step too. 1D says to balance the charge. The magnesium atoms are neutral, so the charge on the left is zero. The magnesium ion has a plus two charge, so the charge on the right is positive two. In order to balance the charge, we must add two electrons to the right side. Now both sides of the equation has a total charge of zero, and so is balanced. So now we can see that the magnesium atoms have lost two electrons when forming magnesium ions. This is an oxidation process, and the oxidation state of the magnesium has increased from zero to plus two. Now we have to balance the hydrogen half equation. Step 1a says to balance atoms which are not oxygen or hydrogen, so we can ignore this step. 1b says to balance oxygen atoms, we ignore this step too. 1C says to balance the hydrogen atoms using hydrogen ions. So by increasing the H plus to 2, this satisfies this step. 1D says to balance the charge. The hydrogen molecule is neutral, so the total charge on the right side is 0. The charge on the hydrogen ion is plus 1. As there are two of them, the total charge on the left is positive 2. In order to balance the charge, we must add two electrons to the more positive side, which is the left side. Now both sides of the equation has a total charge of zero and is balanced. Now we can see that the hydrogen ion have gained electrons when forming the hydrogen molecule. This is a reduction process, and the oxidation state of the hydrogen has decreased from plus one to zero. The final process is to combine the two half equations to give a final overall balanced equation. But first, we must ensure that the number of electrons transferred is the same. There have been two electrons lost and two electrons gained, so this is fine. Now simply add the equations back together, putting all the reactant species on the left side and all the product species on the right. And hey presto, you're done. Notice that the electrons will disappear from the final equation and they're cancelled out. We can see now that the magnesium atoms and the hydrogen ions react in a ratio of 1 to 2. At this point, you're probably thinking, I could have done that from the start. Why do I have to go through such a lengthy process? There are two reasons for this. 
We require you to provide balanced half equations to identify how many electrons are gained and how many are lost. And secondly, most redox reactions are not as simple as this, and many involve water molecules. Let's show you one in the next example. For example two, let's take a look at a reaction involving permanganate ions. We will react some iron 2 sulfate solution with some potassium permanganate that has had some sulfuric acid added to it. The observed colour change is from purple to a pale orange colour. If some thiocyanate solution is now added, it will turn a blood red colour. The key reactant species in this reaction are the iron 2 ions and the permanganate ions. The sulphate and the potassium ions are spectator ions and not involved in the chemical change, so we can ignore them. Now we need to use your resource sheet and your experience to help identify the product species of the reaction. So this redox pair here shows the reaction of acidified potassium permanganate, which helps us identify that the colourless product formed was the manganese ion. So the reaction pair is this one here. The pale orange colour was due to the iron 3 forming from iron 2. So we want this reaction pair here too. The extra step of adding the thiocyanate is often used to help identify the presence of these iron 3 ions. So now we have an unbalanced redox reaction like this. The first step is to divide the equation into two halves, the permanganate half and the iron half. The iron half is quite simple. We can skip steps 1a, 1b and 1c. We have to add one electron to the right side to balance the charge. So now each side of the equation has a plus 2 charge. We can see that the iron 2 iron loses one electron in an oxidation process. The oxidation state of the iron has increased from plus 2 to plus 3. Now let's do the permanganate half. 1a says to balance the manganese atoms first. There is one on each side, so they are already balanced. 1b says to balance oxygen atoms using water molecules. There are four oxygens on the left, so we must add four molecules on the right to balance them. 1c says to balance hydrogen atoms using hydrogen ions. There are now eight hydrogen atoms on the right due to the addition of the water molecules. So we must add eight hydrogen ions to the left to balance them. 1D says to balance the charge. So we must add the total charge on each side. One permanganate ion with a negative one charge and eight hydrogen ions with a plus one charge add to give a total charge of plus seven on the left. One manganese ion with a plus two charge and four water molecules which are neutral add to give a total charge of plus two on the right. So we must add electrons to the more positive side, which is the left side of this case. So we add five electrons to the left side to bring the total charge of plus seven down to plus two, and it now balances with the right side. Notice that the total charge on each side is not going to always be zero, as long as it becomes the same on each side. Now we can see that the permanganate ion has gained five electrons in a reduction process. The oxidation state of the manganese has decreased from plus 7 to plus 2, as the manganese atom has gained these five electrons. Now we have to combine the two halves back together to form a final equation. But one electron was lost by the iron and five electrons gained by the permanganate. So we must multiply the iron half equation by 5 in order to get the number of electrons transferred the same. So the two equations will now look like this. Now we can combine the two halves of the equations together, cancelling out the electrons which occur on both sides of the equation. So the final equation will look like this. In the final equation we can see that the iron 2 and the permanganate react in a ratio of 5 to 1. And that the hydrogen ions are required for this reaction to occur. This is why the reaction mixture is acidified using sulfuric acid. Let's try an example now which is a little bit more difficult. In this reaction, some sulfur dioxide gas is bubbled into some acidified potassium dichromate solution, which clearly has a lovely orange colour.
The bubbles in this case are coming from the sulfur dioxide gash which has been bubbled into it through the pipe and is not a result of one of the products forming. The key reactant species in this redox change are the sulfur dioxide molecule and the dichromate ions. Now we'll need to use our resource sheet to help you identify the product species. The colour change of orange to green is a key indication of the formation of the green chromium ion, so we are needing this reaction pair here. The sulphur dioxide gas has been turned into sulphate ions which are colourless in solution, so we need this reaction pair here. We could identify the presence of the sulphate ions by adding barium ions in an identification test, if we wished. So now our unbalanced redox equation looks a bit like this. The colourless gas of sulphur dioxide and the orange dichromate ions react to form green chromium ions and a colourless ions of sulphate. Let's balance the sulphur dioxide half first. The sulphur atoms are already balanced, so we can ignore this step. 1b says there are two oxygen atoms on the left and four on the right, so we must add two water molecules to the left to balance the oxygens. 1c is to balance the hydrogens. There are four hydrogen atoms on the left, so we need to add four hydrogen ions to the right hand side to balance them. Now we balance the charge. Sulfur dioxide and water are neutral molecules, so the total charge on the left side of the reaction is zero. One sulfate ions with a negative two charge and four hydrogen ions with a plus one charge give a total charge of plus two on the right. So to balance the charge, we must add two electrons to the right hand side. Now both sides of the equation have a balanced charge. A sulfur dioxide molecule loses two electrons in an oxidation process. The oxidation state of the sulfur atoms increase from plus four to plus six as two electrons are lost. Now we balance the dichromate half equation. We need to balance the chromium atoms first by putting a two in front of the chromium ions. This is step 1a. Be careful. Most students forget this step as they are not practiced at this process and end up with the wrong number of electrons. Now we balance the oxygen atoms by putting seven water molecules on the right. 1c requires us to balance the hydrogen atoms by putting 14 hydrogen ions on the left. Now we must balance the charge. The total charge on the left is negative 2 plus 14, which gives a total charge of plus 12 on the left. The total charge on the right is plus 6 plus 0, which is a total charge of plus 6. So we have a total charge on the left of plus 12 and a total charge on the right of plus 6. So 6 electrons must be added to the left hand side in order to balance the charge. A dichromate ion gains 6 electrons in a reduction process and the oxidation state of the chromium atoms decreased from plus 6 to plus 3. So three electrons are then gained by each chromium atom. Since two chromium atoms are involved in this reduction process, six electrons are gained in total. Now, in order to recombine the two halves, the total electrons transferred must be the same. This means the sulfur dioxide equation must be multiplied by a factor of three. This will give our two reaction halves that look like this. When combining these equations, the electrons will cancel out, as there are now six on each side. But also, the water molecules, six on the left and seven on the right. And the hydrogen ions will cancel as well, 14 on the left and 12 on the right. So now our final simplified answer is this. The dichromate and sulfur dioxide react in a ratio of 1 to 3, and the presence of the hydrogen ions on the left indicate that this reaction must be done under acidic conditions, hence the addition of sulfuric acid to the dichromate solution at the beginning. Now it's your turn. Try these half equations as practice. Pause the video at this point and try to balance them on your own. Replay the video to see the answers. If you need to, rewind to slide 3 and copy or screenshot the steps. Try them now.
Here are the answers. In number one, this is an oxidation process as electrons being lost and they appear on the right side. In number two, this is an oxidation process as the electrons are being lost also. In number three, this is a reduction process as the electrons are being gained. They appear on the left side. Now try balancing this reaction using all the steps one to three and then check your answer. Try it now. This is the reduction half equation as the bromate ions gain electrons when forming bromide ions and the electrons appear on the left. This is the oxidation half equation as the iodide ions lose electrons when forming iodide molecules. Electrons appear on the right. Remember, you must have an oxidation and a reduction half equation, so make sure you have electrons on the left and on the right in your two equations. In this reaction, six electrons have been gained by the bromate and two have been lost by the iodide. So the iodide reaction must be multiplied by a factor of three to make sure the number of electrons appeared are the same. And then we can recombine the two half equations to give our final answer like this. Check that you have the same result as me. Now it's up to you to practice this process. Full balanced redox equations are required at an excellence level only. Balanced half equations are for merit and achievement does not require the balanced equations at all. You must though identify the reactant and product species. So don't panic if you can't manage it. It takes practice. Good luck.